Aflatoxins are a family of toxins produced by molds and fungi that are found on agricultural crops such as maize, peanuts, cotton seed and tree nuts among others. If you've ever seen like um, in damp areas where you have molds growing, that's what aflatoxin is like. And um, aflatoxin is really uh, a type of toxin that mainly affects certain types of uh, grains and cereals and then also groundnuts. Um, and, um, and so it's one of the substances that silently can affect our health. Food can be contaminated with aflatoxins at various levels, including during planting, harvesting, and even storage. And when contaminated food is processed, aflatoxins enter the general food supply. Many times it actually happens once they've been produced and harvested in the storage, but the soils can also be contaminated with this aflatoxin. Sometimes in rare circumstances, if you're a farmer, you may um, actually have aflatoxin exposure because of being um, in close proximity with soils that are contaminated. But it's largely due to consumption of foods that have aflatoxin. Aflatoxin um, generally affects groundnuts. Um, it affects cereals like maize and it can also affect um, legumes like beans, like soy. And in some rare circumstances, it can also affect um, uh, milk. It really affects these foods because they tend to be stored in, um, in moist uh, areas, um, damp areas and um, with a lot of heat with poor ventilation. Once exposed, one presents with signs and symptoms which Dr. Kasenene explains. Abdominal pain, vomiting, discoloration of the eyes, they should actually seek urgent medical care. According to Dr. Kasenene, exposure to high quantities of aflatoxins can result into irreversible health complications or even death, especially in young children and the elderly. But aflatoxin can also affect um, the body in other ways. In, in some circumstances, it can affect your heart. In some circumstances, it can affect your immunity and you get autoimmune disease. It can also affect the digestive system. But our biggest concern is the ability to affect the liver. And treatment only depends on what side effects one has from consumption of the aflatoxins. There are some interventions like blood transfusion um, that can help with that. Um, sometimes you, a patient may require some use of IV fluids to help with the rehydration or to flushing out of the toxins and even in some instances antibiotics. There are some more advanced um, methods like light therapy and specific detoxification procedures for the liver. But generally speaking, aflatoxicosis or aflatoxin poisoning is not always easy to detect. But what we should do is take an integrated approach to make sure that the foods that we know that can be contaminated are protected pre and post harvest. Aflatoxins are not largely affected by routine cooking temperatures, but simple food preparation methods such as sorting, washing, crushing may reduce aflatoxin levels. You cannot see it just by looking at these foods. You can't see it by looking at a groundnut or, or, or maize. And so many people don't actually realize the risk. And they don't actually realize that this is something that can be detrimental to our health. Sometimes it can even be found in commercial products, like peanut butter, like fortified cereals, like grains which are being used by people, even for nutrition purposes. And what we need to know is that this is a real problem. And so anytime you're buying grains or nuts or cereals, you really want to think about aflatoxin. Adverse aflatoxins outbreaks have been recorded before in countries like Kenya, where more than 150 people died between 2004 and 2005. The World Health Organization has since come up with recommendations to protect food from contamination. These include proper handling of food at all stages of production, proper drying of harvested food, sorting and disposing of visibly moldy or damaged food crops. The World Health Organization also embarked on a campaign to raise awareness. Dr. Kasenene says there is need for more strict regulations on food handling and processing. But the way we handle these foods in our own homes is also an issue. So whenever you buy these foods, there are a couple of things you want to do. First of all, I know this may seem hard, but it's best if you bought, for example, groundnuts when they are still in their pod, and so that you just unpod them yourself at home. It's nice if you store them for a very short time because the longer you store them, the higher the chance of this mold growing. 
and especially if the storage is hot or humid and doesn't have a lot of air then there are problems we need to start thinking about moving away from modern grains like maize and trying to see if we can promote our traditional grains like millet like sorghum like chia seeds like amaranth because these are less likely to be contaminated by aflatoxin Walter Mwesije, NTV.